you guessed cassette tapes were dead, you'd be most certainly wrong. Enter Exhibit A, the Guardians of the Galaxy, original motion picture soundtrack from 2014, entitled Awesome Mix Volume 1. It's a compilation of several hit songs. This is just a basic, normal bias Type 1 tape. So it's my understanding that this tape had no Dolby B noise reduction applied to it. You get a cassette tape, you pop in your Walkman or your stereo in your car if it is so equipped with a cassette player, and then you get a digital download copy by going to the website and then just entering in the code that's obscured beneath this wrench. I don't want to run into any potential issues with displaying that code even though it's already been redeemed. So it stands to reason that even if I did show you the code it probably wouldn't make much difference because it claims that it's limited to one download per person aside from a detailed track listing have some information about the movie and the producer of the album but aside from that there's no mention anywhere of whether this cassette utilizes Dolby B so it a safe bet to probably assume it, it doesn't. This is the Sony FM and AM stereo cassette quarter model CFS-230 what many of us refer to as a simple boom box and that's exactly what this unit is nothing more nothing less but what it does it does very well as proof that it's a Sony it has some really fantastic audio fidelity its AM and FM tuners are actually more than acceptable for what this is you just have two mid-range speakers for left and right stereo audio a cassette compartment which amazingly actually works on its original belt it's in good condition although I'm sure the head could stand a good cleaning you have a red LED indicating when it's operational and when the cassette mechanism is engaged as typical for boom boxes, you have a control for volume, tone, the tape transport, and Sony was certainly thinking ahead when they developed this radio. This boom box predates the ubiquity of MP3 players and iPods alike, but still it came with a very useful feature, a Walkman in, or what many of us know it as, a line level input. It's a very simple unit actually. Nothing at all exciting about it except for this side bearing a switch to alternate between the bias of the cassette player recorder and a stereo headphone jack, not a mono jack that only outputs or, or a stereo jack that just outputs mono audio on both the left and right channels. This is a true stereo headphone jack as indicated by its green color. You have a convenient Sony handle we're bringing this thing around with you so you can take your music with you and a nice dipole antenna which is not bent can't tell you how many of these boom boxes I come across that have bent antennas or an even worse fate than that they're missing their antenna entirely the data plate here on the back alludes to this unit being manufactured in Korea and being able to operate off of either 120 volts AC consuming about 10 watts of power or C cell battery, six of them in total, although I don't really know why it mentions here a 9 volt flashlight battery because as far as I can tell this has provisions only for six C cell batteries or a figure of eight AC power cord. It is actually my belief that the reason this unit was discarded and I happen to be able to intervene and save it from the trash when I first got this and I tried powering it on I heard nothing but silence and some hum from the power transformer and that was it. And as I played with it back and forth it began to spring to life, albeit slowly at that. It, it took a, quite a bit of doing on my part to get this thing to a point where you can actually hear audio from it. I think for our inaugural test, at least the inaugural test captured on video, I'll play a selection from this awesome mix volume 1 personal favorite of mine. It's quite funny actually, playing a cassette tape from 2014 on a boombox that predates the cassette tape 
by about 19 years. The distortion you might be hearing, at least at the beginning portion of that sample I just played for you, is evident on the cassette tape. I played this on several other cassette decks just to ensure it wasn't a problem with the the deck that I was using to play it with and it turns out that they recorded the tape a bit too loud. This unit is capable of FM stereo operation although it gives no clue or clues as to that functionality. It just says FM up here no mention of FM stereo and there's no FM stereo light you just have to do it by ear and I've noticed that it's quite tricky to get this to lock on to the stereo pilot tone and thus play in stereo so what you have to do more often than not is tune it to right toward the top of the frequency where it begins to taper off and then you'll start hearing the noise it sounds in mono and then it'll switch over to stat stereo and then if you move it back down to the center you then have it in, in stereo operation that is one of the most obnoxious commercials I've ever heard. I just grimace whenever I hear that on the radio because it's usually so deafeningly loud that it makes you just want to turn the radio off and ask yourself why. Why does it need to be so loud? Is their intention to make people go deaf because I think they've succeeded? As it turns out, I get the best balance of treble and bass response by setting the tone control to the middle position, or the 12 o'clock position as it is. It's very hard to tell whether or not this is in stereo mode if this song or the radio station doesn't have very, very much stereo separation. So aside from using your own two ears, there's really no indication at all as to whether or not it's receiving a stereo signal. With this unit being an FM stereo capable unit, there is no option for you to disable FM stereo operation. So if you're attempting to tune in a very weak station and at least be able to make it out and hear it without all that hiss from the stereo, well, there's, there's no way for you to do that unless you off-tune the frequency. And that introduces its own set of challenges and difficulties. So it's either FM stereo or nothing. Unless, of course, the station isn't broadcasting stereo, in which case that aforementioned point or caveat is moot. So we'll just quickly switch over to AM here. AM is a bit more finicky to get this to work. I think it's working now. 1-800-651. I think that's the power supply for this camera. Yes, it is. So for the time being, I'll unplug that. As it turns out, these genuine Canon power supplies don't get along well with AM. We're ignorant and we've kind of let it run. I have to go to a break. Folks, I'm talking to the great Cal Thomas, not to be confused with the man sitting in my studio right here. Uh, I think that's the only Bee Gees you're going to be hearing on AM for a long time. That mechanism is a bit sluggish when fast forwarding, although rewinding doesn't seem to have the same problem. It's quite a bit faster that way. The light is flickering to match the beat of the music if you look closely. I also just noticed that the microphone is actually located in between the volume and tone controls. That small slit. 